What we're about today is policy development, what we're going to be, where we're going to be as an organization so that when you elect, we elect a new General Assembly, a new president, a governor, uh, members of the uh, Council of State, all those races, we'll know what we're going to talk with those folks about come, uh, come next year. But this morning, we do have one political candidate with us. He's not, he's always politicking, he's always campaigning, but he's not here with us this morning officially as a, uh, <clears throat> as a, in a political role. He's here as a friend of ours, you know him, he's our Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler. And Steve and I, yesterday, we were together uh, 200 miles from here yesterday down in Englehart, down in uh, Hyde County, they had a black, they, each year they had the Blackland Farm Managers meeting down there, some of you were down there, Steve Troxler was down there, we were down there yesterday, with 500, I think it was about 500 folks down there yesterday, so um, I know, and he left here, had to go back home, uh, he, he travels all over this state, all of you know him as a hard-working uh, Commissioner of Agriculture, let's welcome our Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler, Steve. Larry, thank you, and I certainly hope we don't elect a new Commissioner of Agriculture in North Carolina in this election. Uh, you know, this has been a, a really good legislative season for, uh, for agriculture and for the uh, Department of Agriculture, and uh, I just wanted to touch on some of the things that, that went on at the legislature and also uh, some of the new things that we've got going on at the department that we, we think are going to help uh, carry North Carolina agriculture into the future, help us be, uh, remain number one, but more than that, help us grow. I think you know, you've heard me say many times that I have a, uh, a goal of this, uh, this industry being a hundred billion dollar industry by 2020, and, and it's entirely possible. In fact, the, the last figures that came out were a little bit surprising to me. But Mike Walden at NC State released the 2014 figures and it showed that we were an $84 billion industry and we had grown $8 billion in one year. And the good news is the uptick was pretty much spread across uh, most areas of agriculture in North Carolina. And when I set that goal of uh, being a $100 billion industry by the year 2020, I, I had a little, uh, a little bit left in my pocket. These figures always stay about uh, a year and a half behind. So uh, if we're talking about it being 84 billion in 2014, then uh, 2020 is a ways away and a, and a ways to grow. So I think it's very easily that we're gonna get there. Uh, we had the governor's task force on food manufacturing that Farm Bureau was a big part of this year. We made recommendations to the governor and the legislature on how do we bring more food manufacturing into North Carolina. Uh, it makes perfect sense. We are one of the most diverse agricultural states in the nation. We produce a lot of different products. But just to give you an example of how important this can be, we produce about 50% of the sweet potatoes in the nation in North Carolina. But do you know how many sweet potato processors we have in North Carolina today? Zero. So, why? Well, I think there are a lot of different reasons, but if, I think if you don't ask, they won't come. So part of what we're going to do is we're going to be asking manufacturers to come to North Carolina. We've got the business climate. We've got the university system. We've got all of the companies at RTP, so it makes perfect sense. A study that we conducted with NC State University shows this is worth $10 billion by itself if we follow these recommendations. So we really want to get on this. And thanks to a grant uh, to the department from the uh, Tobacco Trust Fund, we now have a recruiter on the road full time in North Carolina going to other states and saying, why don't you come to North Carolina? This is what we have. So it makes perfect sense and I think it's gonna be hugely successful. Rich Linton, the Dean of the College of Ag and Life Sciences at NC State uh, says it best. He says, you know, if you look at a can of beans in the grocery store, maybe it's got a value of a dollar. Uh, at the retail level. Well, it's got about 10 cents of beans in it. That's what we're getting right now. Uh, we're growing the beans, but we're getting 10 cents. But we want that whole retail dollar. We want to manufacture the cans, the labels. We want to do the processing. We want to do the uh, storage, the wholesaling. 
the transportation and move it all the way to retail. So this is a very good way to grow uh, agriculture and agribusiness in North Carolina and a very simple and easy way to do it. So that's been a, a success. We did get some funding from the legislature for some of these recommendations and we'll push to get more of the recommendations uh, out there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I made an announcement uh, about Sentinel Landscapes in North Carolina, and there's not uh, a lot about uh, Sentinel Landscapes out there, but this is absolutely huge for eastern North Carolina. We've designated 33 different counties in eastern North Carolina to be in Sentinel Landscape counties, and this Sentinel Landscape program is a, a partnership of federal and state agencies and groups to protect military bases. And the basic premise is that Military bases happen to like farmers and forestry. They're a perfect fit for protecting these bases. So these programs will be designed to help protect military bases and to help farmers stay on the farm. So I think this is going to be huge. And to me, it's just common sense. If you're going to farm and you're in one of these counties and you're offered the opportunity to participate in a program and get some resources, uh, and all you're going to do is do what you're doing now, I, I think that's a pretty good profit margin. So we, we're really tickled with this partnership with the military to be able to do this. I announced last year that we w this was going to be the year of the pollinator. Uh, I think we've all heard about uh, problems with pollinators and some of the things that have happened with colony collapse, and, and we decided in the department that we were going to put forth an effort to start pollinator programs in North Carolina, and that we have. Uh, it's about, to tell you the truth, it's a lot about public perception. Uh, and public perception means a lot if you're in agriculture. If you're 2% and 98% believes something different than what the truth is, then we got a problem. So we have initiated this pollinator pro uh, program uh, we've got pollinator plots uh, all over North Carolina on our research farms, forestry plots, and we're moving into getting these pollinator plots on private farms in North Carolina. At the Century Farm <coughs> celebration at the fair, we're going to draw 200 names to provide these farms with pollinator seeds for next year. Uh, that sounds like a simple thing, but what we found out is the variety of seeds that we have to have and the cost of these seeds is it's different than what you would think. Uh, it costs about $300 worth of seed to seed a quarter of an acre of pollinator plots. But we're going to encourage people across the state to seed these pollinator plots to make sure that we have adequate pollinators for the crops out there and to let the public know that we really do care about pollinators and, and the future that they have. So we, we started that in earnest. We will be uh, getting seeds into public hands in the next year, so I want to encourage er everybody here uh, to take this to heart. Uh, I, some of the uh, pollinator plots are, we have online at the uh, website at the department, and you'll see what goes on. Uh, I guess maybe it's me, but I'm mo noticing that it seems like we have uh, got more monarch butterflies this year than I've seen in a while, uh, more bumblebees. So it's successful, and it can be hugely successful, and this is something that we all need to take. We were, we were coming down the highway. I've been also been to Cherokee uh, this week to a meeting up there, so I literally, I think I've seen most of your 91 counties this, this, just this week. But Bill Yarborough is my special assistant in Western North Carolina, and he was driving, and he hit a monarch butterfly on the highway. And I asked him to go turn himself in to the pollinator police for doing such a dastardly deed because he's actually over the program. And then Dr. Sandy Stewart, who's over the research station, uh, we were coming back yesterday from Englehart, and he hit two at the same time, so he turned himself in. But, uh, you know, it, it's funny, but it's not. Uh, so we're going to take this to heart. and. We've actually, uh, at the Pesticide Division, also uh, instituted a program called Drift Watch. Uh, and it's a, an online way uh, to use a computer to, to track uh, pesticides that are being sprayed close to beehives, and also uh, a program called Bee Check, where hive owners can register their beehives online so that everybody knows this is where the hives are. And if, you know, if you're spraying pesticides, be careful and, and follow directions. So, those two things, too, will contribute to the success of, of the things we got going on. 
I think the granddaddy uh, this year of the uh, policy has been uh, the Connect NC bond package and, and its passage in North Carolina. In that package of bonds, uh, for the first time, agriculture really got significant help, uh, and we're proud of that. Uh, first, the, uh, the program at NC State University the, uh, that's going to build the world's best uh, plant science initiative. Uh, so we're glad that was on there, but also not but known to a lot of people, and it wasn't advertised a lot, but there was uh, $94 million in that bond package for the Department of Agriculture co to consolidate and modernize all the lab facilities that we have here in Raleigh. Uh, that's a huge undertaking, and quite frankly right now, uh, we're a little bit like the dog that caught the bus. Uh, we caught that bus, but a $94 million project is the largest project probably that the Department of Agriculture has ever undertaken. I know it is, but if you added most of the projects in the past 50 years together that we've done, it's that large. So we're now figuring out how is the best way to build these labs, exactly what do we need, but they're important to every citizen in North Carolina because it's our five major labs. Uh, it's the veterinary lab, pesticide lab, food and drug lab, standards lab, and the motor fuels lab. And what we're going to do is combine all of these into one central lab facility so that we can cross train and use more personnel to do the work that we do when we need them. Uh, it's going to be built next to the, so the uh, soils lab, and it's going to be, I think, a pretty amazing facility. I've got people that are traveling across the country looking at the, the newest and modern labs to get some ideas of what we need. We are in the process of picking a uh, lab design team that will actually do the architectural work. So this is probably gonna be a four year project and I look forward to the day that uh, we cut the ribbon on that and North Carolina uh, has the most modern agricultural labs of anybody in the country. But that's the kind of thing it's gonna take to keep us strong in the future and, and we certainly appreciate all of your support uh, Farm Bureau was a major, major force in getting this bond package passed, so uh, we're excited about this, and, and it's going to take quite some time to follow through, but you will be really, really proud when you see what we're going to do there. The legislative session also uh, was kind to us in, in some monetary things. One of the, uh, I'm going to be asked on a, a television interview first of the week in Charlotte, uh, what do you see as the major impediment to the growth of agriculture in the future? And in my mind, it's pretty clear, and that's the disappearance of natural resources. So we're concentrating through the Farmland Preservation Trust Fund on preserving farms and forest land across North Carolina. And we've done, a, I think, a good job with what we have. We protected uh, up to this year about, uh, I think it's about 10,000 acres of farm and forest land. Uh, and we're going to add another 2,000 this year, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to the disappearance of 6.6 .6 million acres of farm and forest land in North Carolina since the year 1970. So we're not going to be able to continue to grow this industry if we keep losing this farmland. And it doesn't make any difference what that loss is from. Uh, we've seen development in North Carolina. The, the recession is over. People are flocking to North Carolina again. Uh, it could be solar facilities, could be wind facilities. No matter what the reason, if we lose farmland, we're going to hit a point of diminishing returns when we simply cannot do what we need to do. So we're going to continue to work on that. And there's extra money this year for not only protecting military bases uh, through the Farmland Preservation Trust Fund, for protecting farms all across North Carolina. So we're going to continue to, to work on that as we go forward. Uh, one thing that was really a dire need that we got this year, we got uh, $2 million to buy a new air tanker for the Forest Service. And we also got an additional million to buy new bulldozers. Uh, and, and to that, that maybe doesn't sound like much, but if you look at the wildfires that we're seeing in the West right now, North Carolina <laughs> leads the nation in the proximity of uh, houses and businesses to forest land. Uh, you think about it and, and, and you understand it, but in a lot of cases, what we're telling the legislature and, and citizens is, yes, we're fighting forest fires. We don't want to see the forest resources disappear because of wildfires, 
but also what we're doing is protecting houses and businesses when we protect uh, when we're fighting the, fire, the wildfires. We have uh, four air tankers in the Department of Agriculture that date back to the 1950s and I was having a little trouble convincing the legislature of that need but we had one of them uh, on display for some uh, elementary school kids uh, at an airport that they visited and one of the little kids said why are these airplanes so old and it got in the newspaper so I underlined that took it to the legislature and I said even an elementary school kid can figure this one out <laughs> Senator Brent Jackson's reply to that was they probably think you and I are old too <laughs> but we got that money for the air tankers and we hope to replace another one we're, what we're going to do these are modern powerful air tankers and we can take two out of service and replace it with one for efficiency they they use much less fuel and they deliver about twice the payload at twice the speed so if we get one more then we'll be up to date on our aircraft uh, in the forest service and so we're making huge progress uh, in that area and i really thank the legislature for their their work on this so it's been a great year uh, and we look forward to another one I can tell you that, that as Commissioner of Agriculture, the thing that I'm proudest of is the partnerships that we have in North Carolina to move agriculture forward. Uh, all of the farm groups, uh, the commodity groups, the university, we're pulling in one direction. Uh, and when we do that, uh, we can do great things. And, and we realize there's really not enough of us left that we can fight amongst ourselves and, and get anything done. So. These partnerships are going to pay great dividends, and, and you're a part of that partnership, and I certainly appreci appreciate the, uh, the hard work that you put into making the, the policy for ag uh, and agribusiness in North Carolina good every day. So, Larry, thank you uh, for this opportunity to be here, and I've got uh, about 1,200 miles under my seat so far this week, and I've got a few more to go, so... I'll be with the governor tonight and then keep at the Poultry Federation dinner and keep going. I'll see you at the Poultry Federation dinner. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Troxler. We all know that uh, uh, we value the relationship here at North Carolina Farm Bureau with the commissioner and his staff. Many members of his staff are here, and we will introduce those folks uh, a little later. But... Uh, Suffice it to say that the Commissioner is exactly right when we have many commodity group uh, executive folks here that we're going to introduce a little later. Without all of us working as, as a farm team here in North Carolina, we don't, we don't move forward. 